This morning, one of the priests in the kitchen, when I was making myself a cup of tea, uh, informed me uh, about a prominent or a well-known figure in the church, a layman who, it just turned out, uh, was, was caught up in scandal and has had to step down um, from the leadership of his big media ministry. And, um, and when, I, when he, the priest mentioned this to me, I right away thought of these 10 pounds that were given to the slaves. Other uh, parables speak of talents, you know, being given talents, being given pounds. Do something good with them. And oftentimes when we think of these parables, we think that the Lord is looking for external good things, you know, external results. Now again, this, this layman who it turns out was, you know, involved in scandal, he established a fairly big media organization, did a lot of things, but was missing the boat. And that's the big thing, you know, I keep hearing me talk about, don't miss the boat. You know, we can establish a bunch of Catholic schools but still miss the boat. We can write a bunch of, you know, books and still miss the boat. We can be running a prayer group every night of the week in our home but still be missing the boat. You know, a married couple can be teaching all about Catholic marriage, but they can be missing the boat, you know. And it, it, it reminds me, one of the blessings in my life is my introduction to the spiritual life was kind of the desert fathers or that little book, The Way of a Pilgrim, you know, someone going off alone to learn how to pray and live in communion with God. And I was always inspired by these figures like St. Anthony of the desert going off into the desert. And, and also just the Desert Fathers in general. And in recent times, there's kind of been a criticism of that approach to the spiritual life. And I've heard it negatively said, and I've, I've read this before, you know, some Catholic commentators saying, oh, you know, in the past, these people going off to be alone and just focusing on themselves. And their approach to evangelization, they thought, oh, if I become impressively holy, that will convert people. And people comment, oh, that's an awful approach to the spiritual life. Now, that's a negative way of putting it, but, you know, a positive way of putting it is, listen, you can't give what you haven't got. And we are made for holiness. That's what's most important. And there, there is something to be said about the person who can kind of set aside focusing on the externals and put his or her primary focus into becoming holy and virtuous. And so when the Lord, he gives us talents, he gives us gifts, what does he want to see? He doesn't necessarily, the, the, the main thing, he's not looking for us to write a lot of books or get a lot of subscribers on YouTube or, or be very influential or, or run a million prayer groups. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to be on fire. He wants us to be transformed, filled with the love of God. He wants us to have the virtues, especially the theological virtues, faith, hope, and love. And when a person does, by the grace of God, become transformed into the likeness of God, filled with his love, radiant, like the Desert Fathers, you know, like so many of these uh, uh, saints who've, who've gone into a contemplative hidden life, when we become radiant with the love of God, with the fire of God, in some mysterious way, this light radiates to the whole world, even though the world might not see it. It's kind of like, you know, what, what do they call ultra light? You know, you can't see it, or uh, is it ultra, not, not, not ultra, ultraviolet light. You can't see it, but it, it can just radiate. Or, or even, a, you know, if there's a positive radiation, it can radiate. People don't see it, but it's doing something. And, and we, we can look to examples like St. Joseph, the father of Jesus, a holy man, his presence had an impact on the world. The Blessed Virgin Mary, you know, again, not doing great external deeds, but holy, great holiness. St. Therese of Lisieux, and even St. Mother Teresa, who did amazing work in the world with the poor throughout the world, great external results, you could say. 
Her focus, if you're familiar with St. Mother Teresa, her focus was on intimacy with the Lord. When her sisters were getting really busy, so much work caring for the poor, and some of them suggested, Mother Teresa, maybe we should spend less time in prayer so we can do more to serve the Lord. Her response was, we're going to spend more time in prayer. Do you remember that story? And so again, just the, in, 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 as, as Catholics who do want to you know, bring the gospel to the world, I'm convinced we have to focus on personal holiness. We have to become saints. We can't set that aside. That can't take second place. It, loving God and being filled with the love of God, that has to take it has to take first place. Because if it doesn't, we might find that we've missed the boat. 